Hi guys, welcome back to Down Under in Thailand. As you may know, I'm not in Thailand at the moment. I'm actually in Australia and I'll be hoping to be back there in about 10 days time. So I'll be able to bring you some more material and life in Thailand, which is what you're here for. Um, what made me decide to put this blog together today was probably to uh, get back in contact with you. Um, I did say, for those of you that saw my earlier uh, vlogs, that I left Thailand about the time we were midway through the build of the mystery project and I had to go out the next day. But I had promised that I would be able to continue to blog while I was away in Australia with some material that I'd shot before that you hadn't seen yet so we've kind of run dry in that respect and uh, I thought I'd give you a heads up back soon and we'll be back into the the Thailand vlogging but today I decided to do a blog get to get back in contact with you and to try and maintain the presence on the YouTube channel that you're used to what prompted me to do that well it was actually that I saw a vlog from a friend of ours uh, Ricky in Isan who also vlogs Thailand who currently has come back to Australia he's in Melbourne for a, a few days so I'm not sure how long and I decided that you know I'd do pretty much along the same lines as him you can see something a bit different from what you do normally on the channel I am back in what was my home country and that is Perth Western Australia for those that, that don't actually know. Today I'm currently at a place called Mundaring. It's a town which is about 40 odd kilometres east of Perth going inland in the foothills of Perth. Um, famous for what? Pretty well as an early settlement it was famous for the Mundaring Weir. That in itself people wouldn't necessarily be very conversant with what it is, but it's a water catchment area where they built a dam and created the water supply for the Perth and metropolitan areas in the early days. When I say early days, not a lot of people would be aware that Australia as a country is pretty young. Captain Cook was supposed discoverer. <laughs> there, were, there were a few before him. But he's renowned for actually instigating the first sort of movement of people and cataloguing, I guess you call it, on his travels to the Australian continent. And that was in 1770. So we're talking really about a short history of about 250 years, over which period there's a lot of migration of predominantly European people come to this country in recent years. You know, the last sort of... Uh, probably half century, been a lot of Asian people and uh, a variety from all over the world. It's a, a real mixture of peoples and cultures. Anyway, um, Mundaring Weir, water catchment area. An engineer discovered that with the advent of the Great Gold Rush, which we did have here in Western Australia, um, that occurred in a place called Kalgoorlie, which is 600 kilometres east of where we are now. Obviously we're on the west coast, so east is going inland. And it's quite an arid area. A gold rush occurred there. I believe it was sort of simultaneously with the sort of the tailing off of, uh, I think, the California gold rush in the US. And an enormous amount of people, miners from all around the world, and specifically also from California, the miners that have been successful there or wanted to move on to greener fields, came to a place called Kalgoorlie to do mining and panning. Well, that grew enormously and it became very evident that one of the factors that were holding back further development was the lack of water, very arid area. An engineer at the time got involved and they decided to put a pipeline, a 600 kilometre pipeline. Well, that's 
where this place becomes sort of famous from because this is where it starts going all the way out to Kalgoorlie and made it possible for the the gold mining to to be as successful as it is today I'm tired looking at me <laughs> look at some of the scenery so we're walking down from the top car park down towards a viewing area it's quite a, a common popular place for people to come to have a look the actual building of the dam itself was was quite an undertaking in the, uh, the historical time that it occurred a lot of it done by hand and uh, you know, we're not talking about any sort of degree of machinery at all in those days maybe steam trains steam shovels if that and we're walking up to the dam wall now which is just there the dam hasn't been full for quite a few years I think it uh, got from the 70s it's been down considerably on what it is today 1990 we had an exceptional wet season which brought it up um, but then four years after that it was dramatically lower so I thought I'd come and have a chat to you today from this location so I've been in Australia for now almost six months I'd never intended to be here that long initially I had hoped it'd only be a couple of months before I could get back there but it didn't work out that way and yeah I'm planning to get back and in 10 days time I'll be there so that's all good telony has been sort of doing it tough on her own um, amazingly strong woman she's been doing her flower business taking care of the farm the best she can you've seen all the chores that we have to do on the farm that she's been doing all that uh, selling flowers in the market from 1 a.m. till 8 p.m. on three or four days a week and that's quite a, a task I've got two stepsons, Tanley's sons one is Fook, he works full-time in Bangkok in uh, media telecast, broadcast, video production uh, big events etc and the second son, the younger son Earn, he is going through university in Konken so he's living away at the moment so he's not capable of being there to uh, help Talney with the tasks so she's doing it on her own amazingly strong woman believe me very driven doesn't complain time to time she suffers from a bit of pain from joint pain it's pretty much from quite a history of working in the Thai massage profession which she was a highly respected uh, person in that particular field for doing the hard Thai massage, traditional massage and consequently that has its toll so she does suffer from time to time with that so we're still looking at the view oh you will be, I'll just turn you around we're now down on the bottom level of the car park and we have people walking across the the dam wall you can see here there's the remains of some concrete pathway that used to go down there I think that comes from very early times of the dam when they were doing the construction and you can see some just poking up above the the sand down there it's like a little beach that's the expanse it goes off well into the distance a big series of catchments um, this what they call water catchment area all of this forest around here is protected and access to it is protected too because they want to keep this water clear and clean sure it gets processed once it leaves here but um, no farming nothing of that like no nitrates and things going into it so it's a bit of quality consequently a lot of the roads which surround the the water catchment itself have been closed off many years ago and there's limited access right to the water line there are other roads which are going to places out in the distance um, there's an observatory out there quite a few kilometers away um, Barton's Mill which is an old uh, what do you call it logging camp there was a lot of logging camps out in the catchment um, vicinity I'd say and on the Darling Scarp which is the small hill range or mountain range outside of Perth 
first person on the coastal plain and um, so uh, Perth about 40 kilometers in inland from Perth is where the the ridge of the range uh, rises up from that runs vertically along the edge of the coastal plain for the greater part of the southern half of Western Australia we'll just go for a walk out here along the dam wall the dam wall has been increased in height a number of times the original wall was probably down near where we see the water line now but I believe there was um, six feet or more added to it a couple of times to raise the height of the um, the sluice gates the overflow so the catchment increased dramatically it doesn't sound like a lot of height to increase but when you consider six foot at this end a depth of water of extra two meters they did it twice so four meters over the expanse a network of this waterway is millions and millions of gallons of water you know, look at the size of this sort of water area that goes off there's many kilometers of this going around the bend and stretches and big catchment areas that additional number of meters is an enormous amount of water but in Perth Western Australia we do have a very rough dry season and we do have water rationing to try and Probably the things that I love the most about this area is the, the hills and the forests. The native forests of Australia are very different to many around the world. There are trees here, obviously eucalypts, which you'll see in Thailand. And um, you tend to see around the Thailand, India area. But uh, there's a lot of unique species here too that you don't see anywhere else in the world. I guess I'm somebody who loves forests. I really do. At an early point in my life I did a lot of uh, driving rally cars and that was all around in forests like this. Some of the great forests down in the south west area of Western Australia um, tend to be a bit more lush and a lot of carry trees which are very different again from jarra trees. They can have some very big giants like the redwoods in America. Beautiful area. And you might think that hurtling around in a rally car in the middle of the night uh, that you wouldn't get to appreciate that. Quite the opposite, you do. Because you stop at a controlled end of a competitive stage or a service area where you're working on the vehicles or have a rest break. And you're out in the middle of nowhere. You're out in God's land and they're beautiful. Places a lot of people wouldn't see because they were so deep in, in the forests. So very fortunate in that respect. Really enjoyed that. Just wander around here a bit. But um, we're talking about the pipeline, 600 kilometer pipeline. That's a crazy long pipeline. And just to carry water. You can imagine if it was gas or if it was um, petroleum or something like that, that there's yeah, a dollar figure attached, transporting a lot of money. But water, well, hey, what's the value of water? You know, cents a litre compared to dollars a litre. Where's the actual rationale in that? Well, the rationale was that it made the gold rush possible. And the amount of gold that has come out of there, and the duties, taxes, levies that the government um, applies to that made an enormous difference to the economy in Western Australia and it was after that that the, the, the mining industry really boomed you know the gold production was the first thing but um, you know then the economy just sort of lit up and Western Australia produces a lot of aluminium ore alumina enormous amount of iron ore sold the world over and bauxite and many other metals there's uh, nickel we have a lot of precious items too used in, in batteries and things now nowadays but was used in many other areas of manufacturing so how does this all relate to down under in Thailand I guess it's just a window into 
my world. A guy who is in what many people call the lucky country saw a need to change his home base to, to Thailand and what I saw there. I got to about 45. I knew guys at that time that were 45 and acted like they were 65, like the game was over. Not for me. I've always been interested in looking forward. Always been interested in the challenge. And that's the way it is. I've climbed in the Himalayas, been through Kathmandu and I've seen Mount Everest. Flown in to the highest airport in the world, which is Lukla. That was quite an interesting trip. <laughs> but uh, I guess I'm adventurous at heart. And while I'm adventurous, I've got no intention of sitting in an armchair somewhere rotting when I can be out doing something that sparks my interest, keeps me involved, keeps me alive. You're only as old as you feel or as young as you feel and you're a long time dead. So don't waste your time. Take what dreams you have and make them a reality. There's always the issue of whether you can finance them, how you're going to make them happen. That's no easy feat, but I'm not going to sit around wondering about it. I'm going to try, I'm going to go out and do it. My move of focus to Thailand, I'm not financially slick. I don't have a lot of money. I have gone through a lot of it recently, but uh, that's not the end. Keep on trying, keep on moving up. 